Does the music evoke any emotions in you? As a musician, our job is to offer our own interpretation based on the clues offered to us. And in order to have a more precise grip on the message behind the music, we first need to understand the context and the story behind. And in this case, it is the story about Orpheus and Eurydice, a story filled with sorrows and tragedies. Or is it? Our story begins with a young couple, Orpheus and Eurydice. Orpheus was a great musician. Supposedly, objects would come to life and beings would become entranced by the music when he played his instrument. Orpheus had a young wife, Eurydice, who is a wood nymph known for her beauty. They loved each other dearly and lived a happy life. Until one day, a venomous snake attacked Eurydice and took her life away. Devastated and heartbroken, Orpheus decided that he would journey to the underworld to rescue his beloved. The journey was filled with dangers and obstacles. Yet Orpheus overcame them one by one with his determination. As he finally arrives in front of Hades and Persephone, the king and queen of the dead. There, Orpheus began to sing about his love for Eurydice, the happy moments they've shared, and plead that she be released back to earth with him. His music was so genuine and appealing that it moved all the listeners in the room. Hades and Persephone eventually granted his plea and released Eurydice, but with one condition. That on his way climbing back to Earth, Orpheus must not turn around to look at Eurydice, and if he did, she would be taken back to the underworld forever. Orpheus agreed and began his journey back to Earth. The path was dark and steep, and every step that Orpheus took, he bared it with both the excitement that he would soon be reunited with Eurydice, and the worry that Persephone has cheated him and Eurydice was not behind him. At last, he came to the end of the path, and right before he stepped into the light of Earth, he took one quick glance back and saw his wife who, because of Orpheus breaking his oath, quickly fell back down into the darkness of the underworld, and Orpheus was never able to bring her back to Earth again. Now, Orpheus has clearly made a foolish mistake for surrendering to the temptation to look back. Or has he? This story, just like all mythic stories, is open to interpretation. For example, in a recent French film, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, there's actually an interesting scene depicting the two main characters, each offering an alternative interpretation as to why Orpheus looked back at the end. Peut-être que s'il se retourne, c'est qu'il fait un choix. Quel choix Il choisit le souvenir de Redis. C'est pour ça qu'il se retourne. Il ne fait pas le choix de l'amoureux, il fait le choix du poète. Elle lui adresse un adieu suprême, qui déjà ne peut qu'à peine parvenir jusqu'à ses oreilles, et elle retombe à l'abîme d'où elle sortait. Peut-être que c'est elle qui lui a dit. Retourne-toi. At the end, did Orpheus finally choose to live with the memory of Eurydice, one that can be perfect and flawless, 
overliving with the actual Eurydice herself. The Eurydice asks Orpheus to look back because she knows that the true beauty can only exist in Orpheus' imagination and his memory of her? I guess we'll never know for certain. But much like Orpheus, we too just embarked on a journey. One that discovers the story and message behind this music written by Gluck. In the next episode, I will talk about the second step of playing emotionally by taking the story we gathered today and applying excerpts of it to different parts of this beautiful melody in order to retell the story of Orpheus and Eurydice through our own playing and our own interpretation. Finally, I would love to hear your interpretation as to why Orpheus looked back at the end of his journey. Let me know in the comment section below. Until next time. <laughs>